So this is the VersaFeed and Amazon product ads presentation on how to optimize your product data feed for Amazon um, using Google Analytics. And my name is John Claven. I am the owner of VersaFeed.com, a data feed service company. Uh, you can see my information there. Um, so if you want to, you can jot that down. Um, we're going to do a QA at the end of this, uh, but you're welcome to contact me directly. Um, on the phone also, I have Christina from Amazon. Um, Christina, if you want to go ahead and say hi. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Christina Wallander. I'm a marketing manager for Amazon product ads. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks, John, for, um, for hosting. This is a great topic. Sure, no problem. Thanks for um, allowing us to do this. So I've also got Andy, one of my coworkers, on the phone as well, just in case we have any technical questions. So don't be afraid if you hear some other voice uh, on the line. Let's go ahead and move on here. So uh, let's take a quick look at an overview of the presentation. Um, first, we're going to talk briefly about Amazon product ads, and Christina will run us through a bit about that. Um, I will then start um, discussing a bit about my company, VersaFeed, and what we do. We will then turn our attention to actually uh, the data feeds um, for uh, Amazon product ads and how to go about tuning them using Google Analytics. A lot of the time we're going to spend looking at screenshots from analytics and some real world examples here. Um, and for QA, uh, feel free to type into the GoToWebinar, uh, the questions area, um, as you go if you have questions. And we'll try to get to as many of those as we can at the end of the presentation. And um, again, if I don't get to your question, feel free to contact me. And my contact information will be available again at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll here. We're going to discuss Amazon product ads. But first, let's try to get a bit of an understanding about how familiar everyone is on the presentation here with Amazon product ads. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that poll now. So you should be able to see that. So feel free to go ahead and click and vote um, what your experience level with Amazon is. Uh, if you're an expert, go ahead and indicate that. If you're a total novice, go for that. Uh, anything in between, enter that. It looks like almost everyone's voted, so I'll go ahead and close that in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now let's share those results so everyone can see. And it looks like uh, about half of you are beginners, and the rest fall somewhere in between. And apparently, uh, I think Christina is uh, the only expert on the, uh, on the presentation here. So let me go ahead and hide that poll so we can continue moving on here. And Christina, I will give it up to you here um, if you want to go ahead and discuss the services. Yeah, thanks so much, John. Sure. Okay, well, since, um, since about half of our listeners are beginners with product ads, um, I'll just walk through a, a brief overview of the program here. And um, with the help of John, I'll give some live examples of product ads on Amazon. So uh, Product Ads is a, a pay-per-click advertising program that allows you to reach shoppers on Amazon with ads that click through to your own e-commerce website. So shoppers purchase directly from you on your website, and you, know, you own the branding, the messaging, the customer experience. Um, this is in contrast to the Sell on Amazon program, where uh, you would sell on the Amazon platform as a third-party seller uh, and fulfill the order. So now, uh, with product ads, shoppers on Amazon will see your ads in a variety of placements as they're searching and browsing and looking for products. Um, so our, our primary placement is on detail pages for products that are being sold on Amazon. So if you've ever shopped on Amazon, you may have seen a section on the detail page called Product Ads from External Websites. And this placement's typically below the product description and Amazon's recommendations. And we'll see an example of that in just a moment. Now, if your product is unique to the Amazon catalog, uh, meaning that neither Amazon nor a third-party seller is currently offering the product, customers may see your product ad in their search results, and they can click directly from search to your website or to an Amazon detail page specific to your product. 
and we'll see an example of that as well. So, um, so John, can can we just go to Amazon and and take a look at um, an example of both of these types of product ads? Yeah, there you go. Great. So this is okay. So so here, this is a session on Amazon.com. Uh, John has done a search for the term leather sectional, and you'll see. Um, so these are are the search results there. So. Um, John, if you just click on the uh, the second search results, so this is a, a um, soft touch reversible leather match three piece sectional sofa set. It looks very nice. Now, if you click through uh, from search, you're going to this is a detail page for this product on Amazon, and I'll just orient you to the detail page for a second before I, I um, scroll down to the uh, the examples of product ads. So now, if I were a customer on Amazon and I clicked the Add to Cart button. I would be purchasing this product from Amazon.com. You can see below the, the in stock in green, it says ships from and sold by Amazon.com. So clicking add to cart would put that uh, product in my Amazon shopping cart and I could check out, buy this from Amazon. Also under the buy box here, under more buying choices, you'll see, um, so these are examples of third party sellers in the sell on Amazon program who are offering this same product. So for instance, if I clicked the Add to Cart button next to Vision Decor Furniture, I would put this product in my Amazon shopping cart um, and be purchasing it from Vision Decor Furniture. So they would be fulfilling the order to me. So now, um, if you scroll down the detail page a little bit, you'll see there's, there's quite a bit of uh, product information. Uh, so we've got here some Amazon recommendations, uh, product features, details, and scrolling down just a bit more below the product description, you can see uh, the placement product ads from external websites. So this is our, our contextual placement here. So what we've done is um, we've selected ads from advertisers, um, which are listing products with product ads, uh, that are relevant to the product being displayed on this detail page. So um, for example, uh, so the, the leftmost result here, um, so from home element stores. Uh, this is an example of a, a similar uh, leather sectional couch. And you can see um, the product ads unit will show the image of the product, the title, the price, uh, and will provide information about shipping if it's, um, if it's actually uh, given to us by the advertiser. And then uh, we list the name of the advertiser that's, uh, that's listed the product. So now uh, if you click on uh, one of these ads here, and um, maybe we'll just walk through an example from the home element stores. Should I go ahead and click that? Yeah, go ahead and click that. We'll, okay. uh, we'll provide a, a click credit there and make sure. So home element stores now um, has advertised this product. Clicking on the ad will take you to their website where you are on a, a detail page specific to this product on their website, and you can purchase this product directly from them. So, um, so this is this is kind of the, the core fundamental example. You'll also notice that um, clicking on the product ad opened a new window. Uh, so the session of Amazon.com is still live, but the customer will go to a new window um, uh, on the website of the advertiser. So for an example of um, a unique product, which gets its own detail page uh, as a product ad, um, John, could you go to um, in the new Amazon session uh, where you've done a, a search for personalized gifts? Yeah. So here, um, so search has already been done. These are the results. And um, so if you uh, scroll down a bit in the search results, there's actually uh, an example of a, a unique product ad. And just scroll down just a, a little bit more. So here you see um, this personalized silver journal with pen gift being advertised by Things Remembered. Now this, um, this is a unique product. Uh, personalized products, customizable products, anything made to order tend to be unique. Um, so you know, when the customer is actually you know, putting in their inputs, by definition, they're kind of creating a, a very specific product. So any kind of customizable products uh, will get their own detail page placement on Amazon, similar to this example. And these unique products are visible directly in search results, as you can see here. And if we were to click on um, the hyperlinked Things Remembered name, we would leave search results directly and go to a, a page for this product on the Things Remembered site. 
But instead, um, let's click on either the title or the image, and that will take us to uh, the unique detail page that we've created for this product on Amazon. Perfect. So, um, so here, this is the, the detail page, and you'll see now, typically in the upper right-hand corner of a detail page on Amazon, you'll see the Amazon Buy box with the Add to Cart button, uh, kind of like we saw in the uh, leather sectional example. Well, for a unique product ad, the Buy box, instead of saying Add to Cart, um, will have a button which says Visit This Site, and the experience is very similar to um, the example for Home Element Furniture. So clicking on this button would take you to a uh, detail page for this product on the Things Remembered site. And, you know, for a personalized product, this is great because then you can provide, you know, your personalization inputs. Thanks, John. Sure. Should I go ahead and click that, or are we good? You know, um, so I, I think that's okay because okay. Now, the one point is at the, the point that um, – that a customer is clicking on a given product ad, the uh, advertiser is charged a cost per click. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we go back to the presentation. Um, but anyway, so let's, um, let's avoid uh, charging a cost per click, which if we had done, we would provide a credit for. Um, so if we go back to the, the presentation, um, I'll just give a brief overview of exactly how it works and how these ads get live on Amazon. So if we go to the, the next slide um, on getting started, so the, the first step to get started with product ads is to create an account. And um, so there's a, a URL here you can go to. Versafeed has a great overview of advertising with product ads. Um, so if you go to versafeed.com backslash overview backslash Amazon, uh, you can click through to our sign up page and get started with an account. Um, we'll also send this this uh, URL in a follow-up email uh, after this webinar. And actually, one thing around um, account creation. So we're, we're currently offering an introductory promotion where we will give you a $75 credit to your account when you get your first click on a live ad. So this is a great way to test out product ads and see how well traffic from Amazon converts on your website, um, which is sort of what, what John will help us um, explain you know, how to do uh, further on in the presentation. So you've set up your account. Um, so once you've done that, uh, the next step is to upload a, a product feed with information about your SKUs. And now one of the core tenets of product ads is easy listing. Uh, we really want listing with product ads to be um, you know, very low friction process. So we only require five fields in the feed, SKU, title, price, link, and category. Now, um, I should say, although we only require these five fields, we recommend that you provide us with as much information as possible. So attributes like the image, UPC, and description for your product, they help us give shoppers more information about your products before they click through to your website, and they also improve our ability to target your ads to customers looking for similar or related products. Um, but suffice it to say, you've uploaded your feed, um, and, and once you've done that, the next step is to set a budget and let us know how much you'd like to spend. So from there, Amazon does all of the work to create the ads uh, in the background. So uh, we'll use the information from your feed. Um, as you saw, the image, title, price, shipping information, if you've provided it, um, and the link that you've provided uh, to the detail page for that product on your website. And we will start serving your ads uh, in targeted placements. So as we kind of walk through, uh, when an Amazon shopper clicks on your ad, you're charged a, a cost per click, and uh, the shopper will leave Amazon, uh, go to a new window uh, for a, a page on your website for that product. So, um, so I mentioned that uh, one of the most important uh, fields that you'll provide to us in your feed is, is the link on your website. And now this is the field where you can embed Google Analytics tracking variables or any other um, web analytics tracking parameters that you have. Uh, and this will help you monitor your return on ad spend so that you're able to track how traffic from Amazon is converting on your site. So uh, with that, I'll pass the presentation back to, to John to talk a little bit more about VersaFeed and how they help you uh, use Google Analytics and, um, and other uh, tracking solutions to monitor your return on ad spend and optimize your product ad speed. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Christina. Uh, that was a great overview of the product ad service. So let's move on here to VersaFeed. So exactly what is VersaFeed? So we're a data feed management service, which um, long story short means we help clients, we help merchants create product inventory feeds, as in lists of exactly what it is they sell. And then we distribute those to various shopping channels, obviously one of those shopping channels being um, Amazon product ads. Uh, we also work with a number of other channels like Google Product Search, Next Tag, Shopzilla, Bing Shopping, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but of course, we do find Amazon product ads to be one of our more compelling channels that we do list clients with. Um, we're a full service solution, and that's kind of a buzzword in some ways, but really what we mean is that we'll dig in deep and try to ensure that retailers don't have to do very much work to get live on the various channels. That's really what it comes down to. So we'll help you actually configure your shopping accounts um, if you have issues um, getting them set up properly. A lot of the times there's um, some tips and tricks for each of the different shopping channels that are required to get a successful campaign going. Um, so we can help you with that. The second thing is we actually will create the feeds for you without you sending us any inventory data. So. That's kind of, I'd say, our main claim to fame. Uh, we don't require you to send us an Excel file or a CSV file or FTPS information. We'll actually pull your product information directly from your database um, or from your back-end administration area or sometimes from your website directly via a crawler. Um, and the final question there is, says, why is this better? Well, the main thing is, Retailers don't have to actually constantly send us updates. We will pull the information ourselves automatically every 48 hours. And that's key because obviously it's just easier for all parties involved. Uh, all you do is keep your website up to date and we will then grab the latest information. When you get new products, we'll grab those. When you have price changes, we'll get those, et cetera, et cetera. The second thing is that by al allowing us to actually access the raw data, we typically can create better feeds. So as Christina was mentioning, the Amazon product ads feeds, um, they have a minimum of things that are required. And then there's also a number of things that are optional. Um, the more of those optional attributes you add, typically the better chances you have at a successful campaign. And that's true with the vast majority of the shopping channels out there. So when we have access to the raw information um, in your database or in your actual um, e-commerce platform um, dashboard, we can pull information like if you have product variations, maybe different colors, different sizes, if you have UPC codes, brands, manufacturer part numbers, any information that you have, we'll have access to for the products and we can grab and we can push that into the feed. Um, and that in turn then it gives you a much better chance at actually having a successful run on the various shopping channels. So that's an overview, our highlights. You can always visit versafeed.com, and there's tons of information there, including a blog, um, FAQs, and overviews of the various channels that we work with. So you can check that out if you'd like to get more information um, on Versafeed. Okay, so now it's time to start digging into actually monitoring um, your Amazon product ads campaign and how to go about doing that. And this is really the, the obviously the, the meat of the presentation here, is how to tune your campaigns in Amazon product ads. Uh, the first step is how to monitor your campaigns. Um, there's four choices here. Obviously from the title of this presentation, we're going to be focused heavily on Google Analytics. Um, but there are three other options. Um, the roll your own, this is kind of the old school way. People would actually uh, look at their web logs. That's rarely done anymore. The two pay options are Core Metrics and Adobe Omniture. Um, I haven't worked with those very much, but they are, from all that I've heard, very great solutions, but they're somewhat expensive, so we're not going to touch on those. Instead, we're going to focus on Google Analytics today. So before we get too much into analytics, I'm going to go ahead and launch the second poll here. Um, and see how familiar everyone is with Google Analytics. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the screen. Uh, feel free to vote. See, we've already got a good amount of people voting. Oh, we've got an expert, so that's good. Um, I'll go ahead and give it a few more seconds to let everyone chime in if they'd like to.
Okay, it looks like most of you have voted. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here. And then I'll share those results with you. And as you can see, we've got quite the bell curve here. Um, so we've got pretty much everyone with most people being in the middle, which is great. Um, for the total novices, don't worry. I will try to um, keep this relatively simplistic. But I think for the intermediate and above, there's also going to be a lot of really good information here because we do delve in pretty deep um, in terms of looking at uh, analytics. So let me go ahead and hide the results here. And let's get back to talking about analytics. So the main reason that we find it the most popular um, solution is the number one thing here. It's free. Um, the second is that it's been already adopted by many of the e-commerce platforms um, or shopping carts that are out there. And what I mean by that is that you don't necessarily need to go in and start tweaking all of your HTML pages to install Google Analytics. Um, most of the e-commerce platforms will simply allow you um, in their administrative area to enter your tracking code and at that point they will automatically tag all of your pages and integrate you with Google Analytics. So it's fairly simple for most shopping carts to, um, to actually install. And uh, for all these reasons, it's by far and away the most common solution for the small to medium-sized business market. Um, only rarely do we come across for large companies using um, something like Adobe Omniture or Core Metrics. So analytics, the basics, how it works. We're not going to spend too much time on this because really, obviously, we're interested in the information we can get from analytics and not the technical details about how it can work. But long story short, when you install Google Analytics, um, the way to do it is that it needs to have special tags, um, JavaScript tags, in all of your HTML pages. Um, usually, this is handled by your e-commerce platform in terms of tagging all of your pages. Um, when a customer then comes to your site, it does set a cookie or a variety of cookies on their uh, browser, um, which again allows for tracking. And it enables you to see a ton of information, um, where clients uh, came from, how long they were on your site, and if they purchased on your site, obviously um, that's an important uh, metric to watch, and how much they purchased, because obviously it makes a difference if someone bought something uh, you know, that was $3 versus $300. So these are um, some important metrics that we're going to get into looking at. Okay, so one area of analytics that's kind of overlooked sometimes is if you just do a basic install of analytics, you don't necessarily get what's called the e-commerce tab. Um, and the e-commerce tab is what tracks your actual revenue. It tells you a lot more than just whether someone was on your site or where they came from. It tells you when they checked out, what they bought, and how much they bought. And that's obviously very important as we're looking at various channels to see what the return on investment is. Oftentimes, this is not configured by default. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But you'll definitely want to ensure that it has been set up properly. Um, it does require one change, and that's on your checkout page. Um, the quote-unquote thank you page after someone's actually made a purchase and um, submitted their credit card information, etc. On that checkout page, the JavaScript is somewhat complex in that it tells Google exactly what was purchased, what the checkout price was, and some other information as well. Um, so make sure this is configured. If you have um, uh, a relatively modern shopping cart like Volusion, Shopify, Magento, Xcart, this typically is already configured for you when you set up Google Analytics. That being said, sometimes it's not. So it's important to get this uh, operational if you can. OK, so finally we're going to talk about the nitty gritty in terms of Amazon product ads and how we can tune. So there's a few options that we can do. The first is if we have categories, if we have product categories that are working well on, on the Amazon product ads program, we can increase the bids for those categories. The idea being, of course, that we'll then get more clicks from those products that are, that are doing well, making sales, and generate more revenue. The other side of the fence is we can remove products from the feed. Um, that are not getting conversions. So if you're getting clicks 
on uh, various products or various brands or entire product categories, but unfortunately they're not converting on your website, uh, you're going to want to, one, give them some time and see if it does work, but if you see a trend over time where you're getting lots of clicks for some particular item, but you're not actually getting any conversions, the option here is to yank it, as in remove from feed here. Um, and that will then prevent Amazon or whatever channel you're working with, because they are similar, um, from actually showing those ads anymore, thereby preventing you from paying for clicks that aren't actually generating revenue on your website. So inside of analytics, we're going to be tracking those exact things. We're going to be looking at trends, namely product brands. Um, say if you were a shoe retailer, there might be brands like Nike, Reebok, Adidas, etc. Um, and product categories as well. Again, we'll go with the shoe retailer here. You might have things like sandals, you might have tennis shoes, and you might have hiking shoes, something like that. And we're going to look at those trends overall. And then, of course, we're also going to want to look at individual SKUs inside of analytics and see what's performing and what is not performing. So this slide is where um, we get down to brass tacks. So analytics uses a variety of what's called UTM variables to track these various things that we want to see. Again, SKUs, brands, and product categories. And this can be a bit confusing, so we're going to spend a bit of time on this slide here. And I'll be referring to this slide as well in some of the upcoming screenshots inside of Google Analytics. Um, so again, the way that this works is that, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this here to make it somewhat uh, easier for everyone to see exactly what I'm referring to. Um, so let's start here with the example URL, and then we're going to come back to the quote-unquote key above here. So you can see here, this that I'm highlighting here, and hopefully everyone can see this, this is the core URL. So if we were going to submit something in a data feed to um, Amazon product ads, we actually could just use what I've highlighted here, and that would be the end of it. Things would work fine. Unfortunately, if you want to track detailed information inside of analytics, you're going to need to go above and beyond this. And that's where you can see the rest of this big lengthy URL is, where we have these um, what's called UR, URL parameters here. There's UTM source, UTM medium, UTM term, UTM campaign, and UTM content. These um, are all defined by Google Analytics, um, and they're essentially what allows retailers to push in additional information into analytics so that we can track those things we were talking about in one of the previous slides. Um, and above here now, let's talk about the key, as I, I call it here, this area here. So for UTM source, we always put in the actual channel name. So obviously for this, we're talking about Amazon. Um, we put uh, medium as VersaFeed, so people know it was a data feed generated by our company. And then we get into the three things we want to track. For term, we're going to go ahead and put the SKU, the actual product SKU. For campaign, we're going to put the product category. And for brand, we're going to go ahead and put the product brand. Um, and so let's go back just to get this more concrete and look at the actual uh, rest of this URL here. And this is the lengthy part I was mentioning before. So you can see here we've got UTM source is Amazon, as I, as I mentioned. We've got medium as VersaFeed. And now this is where we actually start seeing the details. For UTM term, we've put X200. Um, and this is kind of just an example, but as you can see here, we were selling a Coleman ice chest um, dash X200. So the SKU here is X200. The campaign, as we mentioned above, is going to be the product category. So we've set that to outdoor kitchen coolers because we're selling a Coleman ice chest here. And then lastly, we've set UTM content down at the bottom here to the brand, which is Coleman. Hopefully this isn't too over anybody's head, but again, essentially this is allowing us to track additional information inside of analytics that we can then utilize to tune the data feed. So I'll be referring back to this, and I may jump back to this slide as well um, in some of the upcoming uh, slides to reference it. But this, again, is the core way that you tell analytics how to track additional information um, so we can really tune the feeds as best we can. 
Okay, so as most of you probably know, Google Analytics, when everything is configured, the way that you actually get information out of it is you log into google.com slash analytics, and you'll wind up seeing a screenshot like this. Um, and what we've done here is we've put three green um, numbers here, and this represents what you would click on to see the upcoming slides that we're going to show. So we're going to be showing quite a few screenshots, and these screenshots all come from the same area. So once you logged in, you would first want to go ahead and click the one here. Hopefully everyone can see that. I'm going to go ahead and highlight it again. Um, you would click this, and that would be right here, traffic sources. And then you click two, and that would be all traffic sources. And so that would show you inside of analytics all of the various channels that you're using, whether it be Google AdWords, Amazon product ads, or some other channel, maybe even um, email campaigns. You can track everything through analytics. Next, we're going to go ahead and click what we mentioned before, three is the e-commerce tab. And that's going to have us actually allow us to look at this keyword here, obviously, revenue. And then lastly, you can see there's a whole bunch of different uh, channels. We're going to go ahead and click four here for Amazon VersaFeed because for this presentation, obviously, we're interested in looking only at what we've got from the Amazon product ads channel. Um, so all of the upcoming slides, again, will assume you've already clicked these four different things in succession um, inside of analytics. Okay, so our first actual um, detailed slide here, we're going to be looking at adjusting um, or taking a detailed look at your brands. How are your brands performing inside of Google Analytics? Um, so again, we've clicked those four links that we specified before, and as you can see, there's a green area on the screen here, and the next slide is going to jump in and zoom in on this green area so we can see um, details on our brands. And I'm going to mention here, um, all the data that's inside of this presentation is just example data. It's all just been tweaked. So don't worry too much about the actual numbers. It's just for the sake of showing an example of, of um, tuning the feed. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that green area here. OK, so the first thing to note is that over here in the left top corner, We've changed it to add content here. And there's going to be five options here. Um, the five options that we could use, um, we're going to go through most of them here. These are what allow you to cycle through whether you want to look at brands, whether you want to look at individual SKUs, or whether you want to look at a product category. In this case, we're looking at add content, which although is somewhat confusing, add content is actually um, the UTM content parameter that we tacked on to the URL. So if you remember from that one slide that I said we'd be referencing multiple times, we put UTM content um, in that particular example to Coleman. So we're changing our sort up here in add content area, or sorry, in this area here to add content. And that allows this whole list here that you see on the left hand side um, to be actual brands. And these are kind of off the wall brands, but indeed these are brands uh, for a furniture store. So you can see here now, the next thing we've done is we've sorted on visits. And we've sorted on visits because what we're looking for here are brands that are getting clicks but might not be generating revenue. Um, again, we mentioned the tuning options here are you can increase bids for categories that are working or you can remove brands or SKUs or actual uh, categories from your feed so that you do not get clicks for products that may not be performing well. So just as an example here, uh, the first four you can see here, uh, one, two, three, and four, um, the first three of these actually are generating revenue. And you can see that right here. So we're going to disregard those. Let's just say that, OK, those are making money for us, so that's fine. Uh, the next one, number four, home styles here, uh, you can see that it actually has gotten um, zero revenue for 78 clicks. So it's something to consider would be potentially removing the brand home styles from your data feed. Now, 78 clicks might not be enough to actually say, okay, this is not um, a, a brand that's performing well. You might want to let it get higher, or depending on how quickly you are to jump on, on tuning your feed, you might say right now, okay, I've had 80 clicks, that's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and yank it. The only thing to keep in mind here is that it is industry specific. If you're selling items that, let's say, are $2,000 a pop 
and for click for visit number 79 all of a sudden someone comes along and buys two thousand dollars well this just became then a successful brand so you want to weigh your options here in terms of when to remove uh, a brand from your feed but in this case you can you can see the example some of these you might consider removing at this point okay let's talk about categories now so as I mentioned before, um, we're tracking product categories. I think my example was something like sandals and uh, tennis shoes and hiking boots. Obviously, it doesn't really matter, but it's more about um, digging into the details and finding which categories are working. Um, because in Amazon, we actually can in, uh, increase bids in various product categories. Once you log into your Amazon dashboard, you're, uh, you have the ability to tweak your bids based on categories. So Again, we've got the little green box here, and we're going to zoom in on that. Okay, great. So as you can see, this time we've set it to campaign. And again, this can be a bit confusing, but if we flash back to that one slide, if you'll remember, uh, UTM campaign was set to our product categories. Um, and as you can see here, this is again a furniture store, so the examples are all furniture. So you can see we've got bedroom furniture, we've got uh, outdoor fountains, we've got lighting, we've got end tables. And in this case, we're looking for things that are successful. So we've sorted on per visit value because instead of yanking a product from the feed, in this case, we're looking for things that are working out well. And then as you can see, some of these are indeed working well. Per visit value, $107, $60, etc., etc. So you could take a look at these top ones and say, okay, these categories are working well. I'm going to go ahead and log into the Amazon dashboard, and I'm going to see if I can find something similar to these various items, these various categories, excuse me, and see if I can increase bids on those. And again, the idea would be you've got a, you've got a product category, a set of category, a set of products that are, are working well, are indeed generating revenue when they get clicks from Amazon, and you're going to go ahead and bump those numbers up in terms of bids so that you can hopefully get more customers coming in and generate more revenue. Um, so when we're looking, again, just as a recap here, when we're looking for things that are working well, we typically will sort uh, by this per visit value on the right-hand side. When we're looking for the duds, the products that are getting clicks but not converting, we'll typically sort um, on visits. Um, so in this case, we're looking for products that are performing, hence we have sorted on per visit value. Okay, and on the same token, we can look at categories that are not working well. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in again here on the green box, and we're going to sort instead of per visit value, we're going to go ahead and sort on visits. And as you can see here, we have sorted on visits, and we're looking for the bad, as in ones that are getting clicks, products or brands getting clicks, excuse me, categories getting clicks, but not actually generating revenue. And you can see we've highlighted one here in green, which says kid furniture. You can see that most of these, um, most of these categories are indeed generating revenue from the right-hand side column except for this little bugger kid furniture um, uh, number five here, and that's generated zero. And it's gotten 875 clicks here. So at this point, you'd probably want to consider removing from your data feed categories that um, are kid furniture, because for whatever reason, it might not be working, while the other different product categories are indeed working. Okay, so we've looked at uh, product brands, we've looked at product categories. Now finally we're going to just look at actual products, um, as in raw SKUs. And we can't bid, we can't upbid in Amazon on a single SKU. We're only allowed to bid on uh, overall product categories. So in this case, again, we're just going to be looking for products that may not be performing well. Because in terms of tuning, our only real option here is just to remove them from the feed because we do not, again, want to get clicks for products that might actually be um, losing money. So if you're getting clicks but they're not converting, um, that's no good. So 
let's go ahead and zoom in here on again the highlighted green area that you can see here so in this case and again this is just example data um, this isn't actually real but you can see here we've got quite a few SKUs um, we've changed uh, on the left hand side here of the screen you can see that we've changed to a uh, keyword and that again from that one um, special slide where we had all the different URL tagging um, keyword believe it or not correlates to UTM term which if you remember we set to the actual SKU so it's a bit confusing this is just how analytics works but you basically want to set a keyword or excuse me you'd want to change here to keyword so that way this whole left hand side column here um, contains SKUs and as you can see these look like SKUs um, and then we've gone ahead and sorted on visits again because we're looking for products that are not performing we're trying to look at products getting lots of clicks but not generating revenue so you can see there's a few examples here namely the first four um, these have gotten all above 200 visits um, but they've generated no revenue again this is example data you might not necessarily see this in a channel like Amazon product ads but you'd probably want to consider removing these SKUs from your data feed because they're getting hundreds of visits um, of course each visit you do pay for uh, regardless of the channel in general so you don't want to pay for visits that are coming in to your site but not obviously generating revenue okay so we've covered the meat of the presentation in terms of looking at analytics and how we can potentially use that to tune our product ads data feed who can actually do this um, it really depends on your level of expertise obviously there were some people on the uh, webinar who have quite a bit of experience with analytics I'm sure they would feel comfortable doing this other people who mentioned they were um, total rookies at analytics they might have some trouble with this so I put here you can with an exclamation point it might better read you can with a period um, it's not necessarily super easy if you're um, a novice that being said if you try to use Google Analytics for an hour or so every week if possible more but whatever you can do over time you can become proficient it does seem a bit overwhelming at first but it's by no means um, something that can't be uh, conquered over time secondly if you have agencies whether they're your data feed company or um, your SEO company or maybe an AdWords company um, you can kind of uh, let's just say for lack of a better word um, annoy them and see if you can get help from them oftentimes they're very familiar with Google Analytic Analytics and if you're already paying them for help um, they may be able to help you take a look or if you get stuck on something in particular they might be able to offer some advice and lastly of course there's VersaFeed uh, my company um, we do analytics help only for clients so you have to be a subscriber to our data feed service um, and we can do basic um, analytics help in terms of if, if you're stuck on something or you need some information we can take a look at it for you if you do need detailed analysis we do bill for it um, however for basic questions for help on things um, that's not a problem and that's included in the price of our service okay as an overview here we've looked at quite a bit of stuff actually and we've actually gone a little bit longer than I thought we would um, how to track your data how to use analytics to do that and utilizing a feed provider like VersaFeed who can helpfully uh, hopefully understand these concepts and help you work through any hiccups that you might have as you tune your data feeds okay so we're gonna get into QA now um, I'm only gonna have this slide up for a second because I want to then move on to the next one which actually has my contact information as well as Christina's hold on one second and we will move along if you have any questions at this point um, everyone who's um, on the line feel free to push them in um, there's uh, in your go to webinar uh, control panel the little dashboard that pops up you can expand the questions area and you can then enter um, any questions that you might have and I'm gonna go ahead and leave this final slide up here um, which has <clears throat> information on um, 
on a, a variety of things. One is if you want to get um, an overview of Amazon, you can visit that first link there. If you're interested in signing up with VersaFeed to be your data feed provider, you can visit the second link, versafeed.com slash sign up. And if you have follow-up questions <clears throat> or you're interested in VersaFeed or if you have any questions that are um, very, very uh, Amazon product ads specific, you're welcome to email Christina as well. Um, our contact information is up there and um, feel free to utilize that or jot that down and hopefully we can help you with any cues that you might have. So uh, let's see here. Okay, Christina, yeah, if you want to go ahead and talk about um, the uh, cost per click pricing and bids for product ads, um, feel free to go ahead and jump in on that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, thanks, John. Well, so one thing, uh, when I went over the kind of uh, quick steps to getting started, um, you know, I mentioned, so, you know, create an account, upload your product, set your budget, and from there, Amazon will start serving your ads in targeted placements. Um, I did not mention that setting your bids was um, a requirement to get started, and that's actually because we will uh, default all of your bids to the minimum bid for each category and price band. So product ads has a minimum CPC bid rate card, um, which you can see on our website, productads.amazon.com or um, by clicking on the VersaFeed sign-up link, actually you'll see our rate card there. So there's a, sort of a, a minimum for each category and price band, um, and you'll, you'll get defaulted to that minimum. And, you know, John, um, I, I thought your example was great, sort of walking through where you might bid upward of the minimum. Um, so for a particular category, for instance, that's performing very well for you, bidding higher than the minimum um, in product ads is an advantage because for any available uh, placements that we have for product ads, um, among the things we consider for determining which ads to serve in that placement is the CPC bid of the advertisers with um, eligible listings. So higher bids um, can result in more prominent placements and more placements on Amazon. So for the categories that are performing well for you, um, it's a, a great opportunity to try to increase your visibility uh, by bidding upwards of the minimum that your um, your account will default to. Okay, fantastic. Um, we got one question in here. Let's see if I can answer this. Are SKUs really important for selling products today? So I'm not totally sure I have that one understood, but in general, SKUs are of two types. There's the internal SKU, which usually is not super important, and then there's the manufacturer part number, um, which can be important. So if you have access to the manufacturer part number, you'll definitely want to include that in your e-commerce platform. Um, as a larger picture, you, you do need something, obviously, to identify your individual products, whether it's a SKU or a manufacturer part number. Um, and the reason for that is like we mentioned when we were tracking um, inside of analytics when we set, uh, we looked at the UTM term, which is the SKU, um, and that essentially uh, just allows us to identify what products um, are performing well versus what products are not performing well. Um, in terms of SKUs as well, I will mention briefly UPC codes. Um, I'm not sure, potentially the, uh, the person who asked this was curious about that. UPC codes indeed are very important. Um, for almost all of the channels uh, these days, they help the different um, the different uh, channels essentially help categorize your product so they know exactly what the product is you're selling. Um, it helps them to group it with other products that are similar. So if indeed the person who was asking this um, is interested in that particular area, UPCs are indeed uh, very important. And the one point I'll make um, as far as the um the advertiser's own SKU, so that for product ads is one of the five required fields. Um, and as John mentioned, that's just so that you can identify uh, in performance reporting and in your own tracking exactly you know, which product is uh, receiving the click since our, our ads are at the product level. Okay, and we've got another question here. What do we need to select in Google Analytics to view the UTM term, and that's a good question because when we were going through those various screenshots, um, it can be somewhat confusing as to where exactly um, you specify, okay, I want to look at actual SKUs. 
So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to a previous slide here so I can answer that better. So first, um, again, I'm going to jump back here, and I've got all my scribblings here. The first thing you do again is you want to click 1, 2, 3, and 4 on this page, um, drilling down in, into whatever. Uh, 1, 2, and 3 you always want to click. 4 obviously is based on what channel you're looking at. Um, in this particular example, obviously, we're talking about Amazon product ads. Now, once you've done that, you're going to want to, um, let me go ahead and look at the SKUs here. And this was our example for looking at SKUs. And I'll go ahead and zoom in again so I can try to answer that as best as we can here. Um, that top left thing that says keyword there, which I've got a big red line running through, that's actually where you would finally see, um, in, in terms of this area, you would see your SKUs. That only works because we tagged our URLs. Again, I keep referring back to that one slide where we specified in there, if you remember, that UTM term in the URL parameter was set to the SKU. So if you set UTM term to your product SKU, and then you go in into those uh, four clicks that we mentioned previously, you'll, you'll wind up in this area, and then you'll want to, again, in the top left side here, uh, select keyword, which I know is a very odd way of mapping this. It doesn't really make sense, but believe it or not, keyword is equal to UTM term. And from that one example, that actually is the SKU. Um, so this is where you would actually get a listing of your SKUs. And then at that point, you can sort on, on all kinds of things, depending on what you're looking for. In our case, we were looking for products that might not be performing as well. So we sorted on visits, and we saw that we did indeed have a few that were not generating revenue. So that's, that's really how you would go about, um, again, tracking your individual SKUs and where you would find them. Okay, I got another question here. Is there different information available under traffic sources campaigns in Google Analytics? Um, there's a lot of different ways to click and get into this information inside of analytics, and that's kind of one of the confusing things about analytics. If you click traffic sources and campaigns, essentially what's going to happen is they're just going to default here. Like in this example here on this slide I have, we were looking at keyword, um, which I've got over here, the, the mouse cursor hovered by. Um, if you go into uh, to traffic sources and then click campaigns in a different area, you're going to actually look at as if you would set this to UTM, um, I believe UTM medium or UTM source, which would then show you a list like Amazon or VersaFeed. So you can drill down in various ways, and that's why I kind of encourage people just to play around with the analytics interface and see what you find, because that information, um, it's, it's, there's a lot of different ways to drill down inside of analytics, and it can be a bit confusing. Once you get the hang of it, though, a lot of the times what it really comes down to is that top left word, again, in this example, keyword, and what they're, what they're sorting on. Um, so, yes, you could do that, and you could get information um, in there. It wouldn't necessarily be different, but it would be laid out in a slightly different format. But at the end of the day, they're usually displaying the same information, just sorted or displayed differently. Okay, and I think that might be about it. Um, let me just check to see if there's any other questions before we wrap this up. And I'd like to thank everyone again for attending today. We actually ran the full hour, which I'm impressed by, and thanks for the great questions. Um, again, I have the information up here on the screen. Uh, feel free to contact either myself or uh, Christina, and we will do our best to answer any questions that you have. So thanks again, everyone, and with that, I will end the webinar.